Hello. In this video we will see the operation of pixels and their organization in an LCD screen. The display of an image is a complex process involving several electronic components. We will start with a reminder of some definitions concerning the characteristics of an LCD screen. When buying a television, the first thing we look is its exterior appearance and first the width of the screen, L, its height, H, and its diagonal, D. Then, we must ask about the number of pixels it contains. LCD screens contain thousands or millions of pixels. To know the exact quantity of these pixels, we must see what is called the display resolution. This display resolution expresses the number of pixels it contains. It is calculated by multiplying the number of pixels contained on the width of the screen by the number of pixels on the height. Example with a screen having 3840 pixels on its width and 2160 pixels on its height, the total number will be 8,294,400 pixels. This corresponds to a screen called 4K. This number of pixels will vary with the display resolution of the screen. We see on this table the different values of display resolution depending on the model. Compared to a 4K screen, an 8K screen contains four times more pixels. Two screens can have the same size but what will differentiate them is the number of pixels that each will contain. At equal size, the higher the number of pixels, the better the shades of the lights and colors will be and we will see more details. Conversely, what happens with two screens which do not have the same size but which each contain the same number of pixels? Here, on the larger screen, the pixels will be more widely spaced, on the other hand, on the smaller screen, the distance between the pixels will be smaller. To express this characteristic, we will use the term of pixel density. The pixel density is calculated using the inch as unit of measurement. An inch is equivalent to 2, 54 centimeters which is the average length of the second phalanx of the thumb. To know the resolution of a 16 ninths format screen, you need to know the width of the screen, L, the height, H, the diagonal, D, and the display resolution, X pixels across the width, and Y the number of pixels on the height. We introduce all these values into a somewhat complex mathematical formula that will determine the value of the pixel density. The result of the pixel density is denoted by the abbreviation PPI, which stands for pixel per inch. In this example, the 42-inch screen has a resolution value at 104 pixels per inch. That is much higher than the 65-inch screen. The difference comes from the fact that to put so many pixels on a smaller surface, you have to bring them as close as possible. Now technological developments allow 22-inch screens to be manufactured in 4K. The advantage of having a maximum of pixels is particularly useful for large screens that can display as much detail as possible. With an insufficient number of pixels over a large area, the image will look pixelated. This table shows various characteristics of 16 ninths format televisions. For each television set is noted in the first column the display resolution which corresponds to the quantity of pixels it contains. On the second column, we find the standard used. For example on the first line, a screen of 720 by 480 pixels corresponds to the DVD standard. On the third column is noted the name of the display resolution. To describe it, we use the second number which represents the number of pixels on the height of the screen and to which has been added the letter P, the exact meaning of which will be detailed in a moment. The last column represents the various trade names for these televisions. It is more telling for ordinary people to say a 4K TV than a UHD TV 1 or 2160p TV. We will now see what corresponds to the letter P in lowercase, following the digit of the number of pixels on the height of the screen. There are two display technologies of the lines in a screen. The so-called P mode stands for progressive scan. The line are displayed one by one. The other mode is an old technology called interlaced. This technique was used in cathode ray tube televisions. The screen is scanned by an electron beam. The image is split into two parts, an odd frame image and an even frame image. The quality is better with the P mode which is the progressive scan. The drawback of the interlaced mode was that it sometimes gave the appearance of a duplicated image. Now, 
we're going to tackle the technical part to see how this phenomenal quantity of pixels works. On this screen taken as an example and to simplify things, this screen contains very few pixels. If we do the calculation 6x7 gives us a display resolution with 42 pixels. But we know that each pixel is represented by three sub-pixels. Each sub-pixel is dedicated to the display of the red color shades, another for the green and a third for the blue. In total this screen has 42 pixels by 3 which gives a total of 126 sub-pixels. The sub-pixel is an electronic component made of a transistor type TFT which is the acronym of Thin Film Transistor. It is represented as a MOSFET. There is a gate, a source and a drain. In addition to this transistor, there is the liquid crystal which behaves electrically like a capacitor. At its sides is put a real capacitor called storage capacitor. The latter was added because the liquid crystal does not hold the charge properly, hence the idea of adding a capacitor in parallel to maintain the display of the liquid crystal until the arrival of the next image scan. If there was no storage capacity, the liquid crystal would have lost its charge and therefore its luminosity, while a new electrical impulse was being sent to it. The power supply of each sub-pixel is done in the following way. All the gates placed on the same line will receive the same power supply, either VGH or VGL. However, each source will receive a different voltage. This voltage corresponds to the analog translation of the digital data of the color of each sub-pixel. This concept will be discussed in more detail in a future video. The storage capacitor and the drain of all the TFT transistors composing the screen are connected to the same conductive track which is the VCOM. To control all these circuits, there are electronic components called drivers. These drivers are attached to the LCD screen. There are two types. At the top or bottom on the width of the screen are the electronic circuits that control the data. On one or both sides of the screen which corresponds to its height are the electronic circuits that control the gate of the transistors. We have just said that at the top or bottom of the screen are the circuits related to the image data and which are connected vertically to the source of each sub-pixel. These circuits are called driver source or driver column because of their vertical arrangement. The number of source drivers depends on the number of columns on the screen and the technical characteristics of the driver, i.e. the number of columns it can handle. The circuits placed on the side of the screen are used to drive the TFT transistors through their gate. These are the integrated circuits that control the passage or not of the voltage VGH and VGL that comes from the T-con board. They are known under various names, gate driver, row driver, and sometimes we find the terms of scan driver. As for the driver of the sources, the number of the gate drivers also depends on the number of rows to be controlled in the technical characteristics of this driver, i.e. the number of rows which it can manage. The principle of these drivers is to supply voltage to the TFTs one row after another starting with the first row located at the top or bottom of the screen. Each time there is only one row that is active all the others are disabled. Gate driver chips can be presented in several forms. Either as shown in this figure, they are engraved on a plastic film by which they are attached to the screen. This technology is known under the abbreviation of COF which is a contraction of chip on film. On this screen there are two gate drivers which means that the screen on the horizontal plane is divided into two. Each gate driver will control one half of the screen. In other cases, the chips are not directly visible and there is no plastic film attached to the screen on the sides, unlike the top chips, the source drivers, which are always visible and attached to the screen through a plastic film. In the case where we do not see film on the sides of the screen is that the chips of the gate driver are engraved directly on the glass of the screen. This technique is called chip on glass noted in abbreviation COG. The gate driver chips which are directly etched on the screen glass, are connected to the TCON board thanks to conductive tracks, bypassing the screen edges. Some of these conductive tracks, do not go to the gate driver, but go to the common electrode that receives the VCOM. Other conductive tracks also bypass the screen across its width either through the underside of the TCON board, or bypassing the cough without going through the chips that drive the columns. For example, these tracks under the TCON, make it possible to transmit the same gamma voltages to each source driver. For the VCOM its distribution is made in the same way. On this TCON board we can see on the picture several VCOM inscriptions accompanied for some of them by a number. This does not mean that there are several of them but just to be able to identify them with the six cough that this board has. We can check it with the multimeter, they are all connected to the same track.
A particularity to know about the chips that are engraved on a film or cough is that they have regions that correspond to test points, where we can access the measurement of various voltages or control the signal with an oscilloscope. On this picture, the circles indicate the different test points. The conductive surface is protected by an insulating material. It is enough to scratch it carefully to access the conductive part. With the number of the chip, you have to find the datasheet to know the correspondence of each test point. For the example, here have been noted various inscriptions concerning the gate driver. We find the classic VGH, VGL, and GND which is the ground. In the next video will be detailed the meaning of CPV, CKV, OE, XAO, STV and many others. The different voltages that will go to the gate driver and the source driver chips are produced on the TCON board. The latter can communicate individually with each pixel. We have seen that in a screen, there are rows and columns. Each pixel corresponds to the intersection of a row with a column. The position of a pixel in the screen is noted with two values. First, the number of the row followed by the number of the column. For example, on this screen which has a display resolution of 1280 by 720, the first pixel placed at the top left of the screen is noted 1 and 1 which means pixel placed on the first line and connected to the first column. We take another example with the last pixel placed at the bottom right of the screen. Its number is 720 and 1280, which means the pixel placed on the 720th line connected to the 1280th column. The TCON sends the information at the right time to each pixel to display the corresponding color. Example the pixel 1 and 1 must display a white color, the pixel 2 and 1277 the orange color, the pixel 719 and 1 the blue color and so on until the complete display of the image. In practice, what can this information be used for? Let's take the example of this screen with three gate driver chips which means that the screen is divided horizontally into three parts. Each driver will control a third of the screen. Now let's suppose that the last gate driver is out of order, due to a fault in the VGH voltage. This will result in a missing part of the image. The repair will consist in bringing this missing voltage with a copper wire directly from the TCON board to the corresponding cough. The copper wire used which will be soldered to the test point of the VGH on the cough must be very thin about 0.1 mm and it is recommended to add a low resistance of 100 ohms in series. Another technique to make this repair is to take the VGH not from the TCON but from the neighboring cough. This will have the advantage of putting a shorter wire. It will first be necessary to check with the datasheet the configuration of the tracks on the cough. There can be two cases of figures either the tracks of the VGH do not pass by the chip and go from close close directly to the neighboring cough, or the track of the VGH enters the chip and then leaves by another track. In the case of direct passage, the VGH can be taken from any point of the cough. However, if the VGH track enters the chip, it is mandatory to take the VGH after exiting the chip. We are going to finish this subject with a particular failure that we can meet in the screens which comprises on each side a series of gate driver. The failure of only one of these chips can lead to a display defect. In general on this type of screen, the display is divided vertically into two halves and three parts horizontally. The TCON board controls half the display through two cables. To determine the failure, it is necessary first to locate the side in cause. We begin by disconnecting the cable which connects the TCON board to the screen on one side only, then we observe the result. If nothing happens, we do the opposite maneuver by disconnecting the cable that controls the other half of the screen. If by magic the image reappears, this indicates that the fault comes from the same side of the disconnected cable. To repair this failure, we can remove the three cough on the side of which we have determined the defect. The image reappears without defect except for a decrease in the display resolution because a quantity of pixel has been artificially removed. Here is a schematic representation of the same screen with a full HD display resolution. It contains in height 1080 lines which are controlled by 6 gate driver. The fact of removing the 3 cough leads to a decrease of half the number of pixels on the height. Hence a decrease in the display resolution. We arrive at the end of the video. See you soon.